Hello, this is Let Me Know How It Is, a podcast about all things geek. We're talking when TV shows become movies today. If you're a new listener, welcome. We release new episodes every Wednesday. Please don't forget to subscribe and leave us a topic suggestion in the comment section. Thanks for listening. All right, we are talking TV movies, but not TV movies. We're talking TV shows that get made into movies. I'm Zach Slater. I'm Frank Melman. This is Tommy Smithereens. And I'm Clifton. So there are two kinds, as far as I can tell, TV shows that get a movie after the fact, like after the show has run its course, or even sometimes during the show's course, uh, and then shows that get rebooted as movies. So we're going to we're going to start with the first TV shows that get a movie as part of a, as a continuation, essentially. So let's start with that. And, uh, you know, we'll move on to some of the other ones later on. So just for sake of clarity, are we talking about movies that are like theatrical releases or by the way, we had something on Netflix or on another network that gave us a movie? Well, yeah, at this point, I think that that doesn't matter because Netflix with like Breaking Bad has kind of opened it up to be like right. to, to that being part of it. Right. OK. Mm-hmm. Yeah. OK. So but we're not talking about the death of the Hulk on NBC on a Saturday night back in the right. Early I mean, not the death. But Clifton, right. that is a movie. Technically, that's a movie. It's an extended <laughs> form. It's not just an episode of The Incredible right. Hulk, fugitive style. Right. So, so that's why so I just want a clarification. So, well, th- this this idea was spurned on by by the recent news that Netflix was canceling Glow after it was announced for a fourth season, and they were even partway through shooting. Uh some of the episodes and then uh, fans and some of the, the cast and creators were kind of clamoring. We're, well, hopefully Netflix will give us a movie that we can tie, tie things up, which, which is one of the forms that this takes, which sometimes you get a show that that's, that's ended prematurely and you kind of get a movie to sort of like, let's, let's wrap up everything that was left untied. Mm-hmm. Okay. The death the of the incredible Hulk does count that. I uh-huh, told you Clifton. <laughs> Which, did that okay. one have Thor or Daredevil? I can't remember. That's, is that the Trial of the Hulk? Trial, the trial of the Hulk had Daredevil. Yeah, that's Daredevil. That's a, I think the wrap-up is no, Maybe is neither one. of them were in death. Thor was in one of them, though. Hmm. No, that's right, because it's, it's, I think it's Thor, Trial, and Death. Is how it goes. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a downer, you know. <laughs> it's, no, it's no fun being the Hulk in that universe at all. No. Yeah, so that's a situation where we had the Incredible Hulk series of the 70s. Mm-hmm. that ended and then they continued in the form of, of TV movies that ran on NBC through okay. the 80s and into early 90s, I guess. So right. question for that, because I never watched any of that stuff. What was the what was the runtime of the show when it was a series? And then what was the runtime of these movies? Well, it was like a two hour event. That's, the, that's how it was sold to you. by on, when it was well, it was on CBS, right? That's where it was. That's where CBS, I couldn't remember whichever yeah. network I see. CBS, CBS had the yeah, Marvel CBS. CBS. quote unquote movies of the day. They had the okay. Marvel movies. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, the regular series was, I want to say it was a full hour, wasn't it? An hour? An hour long? Yes, drama? It was an hour. Oh my gosh, you don't, don't remember the Credible Hope? Hmm? Yeah, they were hour long episodes. Yeah, I thought, so I thought this, they were hour longs. Okay. So this was so this was two hours. You got it, you basically, you know, you were you were sold on the idea of, you know, it's gonna be basically two hours of of semi Hulk excitement right so you get you'll get like three transformations in this instead of one right, right. Of yeah one. yeah when he's yeah. Bu- when when david banner is bullied by the town drunks or whatever that'll happen <laughs> and then you know the hulk will toss them in slow motion into a truck or whatever and then that'll be that and then yeah you'll get two more <laughs> whatever okay. whatever he's whoever he's fighting what but it's funny that you mentioned that Clifton, because i always think of the, the the daredevil bit and that is that daredevil of course is matt burdock and with the bit with Daredevil is you're not supposed to know that he's blind, right? But, but uh, <laughs> Daredevil wears a blindfold in that one <laughs> right, <laughs> when right. he's Daredevil, <laughs> right? It looks a lot like one of his outfits in the Netflix show, like his yeah. early outfit in yeah. the Netflix show. Yeah, yeah, looks like the the Man Without Fear outfit from. I was, that was, yeah. I was, yeah, that was right? the next thing I was gonna say. It definitely looks like his Man Without Fear yeah. outfit. So, but yeah, that one ran for the show ran for five seasons, eighty episodes, and then had five TV movies. Eighty episodes, wow. really? Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. Seventy-seven to nineteen eighty-two. Yeah, that's all. That is a lot. So, do do they work? Um, I loved them when I was a kid. Yeah, okay. I liked them too. <laughs> I so. looked forward to them. Okay, 
Yeah, I enjoyed them, but it was, you know, I don't, I haven't seen them all. I remember seeing the Daredevil one and the Thor one, and I think those are the only two that I saw. I'm not trying to lead you guys. I'm not, I'm not, uh, like, that's not my opinion that these generally don't work. But what I think (laughs) is that I I think these things can be tricky, Mm -hmm. right? Because in a lot of cases, you have a show that, has a formula, has a feel, has 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 a, a a way that it works, and then and then suddenly now you have to make that thing fit into a movie runtime, and sometimes I think that that alone can be can be a tricky tricky waters to navigate, right? How do we how do we make it feel like the show, but take advantage of the fact that we're a movie, and also and going off of that. I think that some shows, in my opinion, I think can overthink the fact that they get a movie and and can lean a little too far into into, well, it's got to feel cinematic and it's got to feel like this. And we suddenly have a bigger budget and, and we can play with things like that. And I think you would be silly not to take advantage of that stuff. But in some cases, in my opinion, I think you can go a little too far and it can end up not feeling like the show. Right. It can become a different creature. Yeah. Well, before we before we answer those questions or your thoughts on it, you got to remember Creature too. This is when when they did the made for TV movies, which now is an outdated concept. I mean, unless you're on Lifetime, you know, <laughs> or Hallmark, Hallmark, or Hallmark. Yeah, stay right. tuned. Made for TV movies aren't as structured as what they were before. I mean, it felt like every show had their made for TV movie at one point or another, mm-hmm. or you'd have Valerie Bertinelli in, in like a serious role. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. You know, you, you see her as, as, as her, uh, her character on One Day at a Time back in the 70s and the early 80s, and then all of a sudden she's doing some bad girl role in the CBS Sunday Night Movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I was going to save this, but this is my perfect example of one where I think, I think the movies tend to feel a little different. Okay. Uh, and we're in, we're all things geek show. I don't know why I'm bringing this up, but Sex in the City. <laughs> okay sex in the city i i will freely admit i went through a sex in the city phase okay <laughs> um it's a 30 minute show right right and then suddenly you get you get thrust upon you you're, gonna do, so. you're gonna do a two-hour movie <laughs> okay. right and i think part of the show was was that uh you know they had other half hours to explore story so this character gets the focal point in this episode and this character gets the focal point in that episode. Right. And we were OK with the fact that, OK, maybe this episode was a little light on Charlotte. <laughs> right. Because we're going to make it up down the line, like later in the season. Right. In the movie, that balancing act is really tough to, to, to get right, I think. And there and clearly, I think if you see the movie, which I know many of you haven't, uh, you know, I have not. Um, but like, you know, two of the characters are really focused on and the other two, not so much, you know? Yeah, I think, but I think that's an example of we're cashing out to make movie money. Um, very possible, but I know, I know that there, I know that there are things that people care about out there that have done the same thing. Yeah. But all right, let me put it this, but let me, let me put it this way. You know, the old trope of when a cartoon ends, we get a movie. OK, uh, to me, it's different from that because I felt like they didn't Sex and City got bigger with each con, with each season. Mm-hmm. So I think it was natural to move it out into a bigger venue in order to cash in directly from that fandom. Right. As opposed to, let's say. Um, um, G.I. Joe, the movie. In which it wraps up, I guess, the series. But in a way that it's in a grander form, eh, it doesn't wrap up anything. Oh no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> I mean, they made it more doesn't. after that. But yeah, I, I get, yeah. I get what you're saying. Go. <laughs> yeah, but they made it a different show after that. Well, Transformers is an example of Sex in the City, in which it got it got so big they gave us they put it in the movie theaters. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And did it well. And did it well. I think, in my opinion. Hmm. You know. Yeah, I just like it. It's just uh, it, it's just uh, a, a tough balancing act, like I was saying. And I think I think um, 
Transformers was a successful one, in my opinion. I love that movie. I think it's great. You know, I think. Um, but it, 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 what I will say is that it, it's not the show in the sense that I think I think it's, you know, head and shoulders better than the show. Oh, yeah. In places, it's sort of like, you know, it's the effects that they use, the animation style, right? Like like the um, the music, the stakes, the stakes, the music, the voice acting. It was top notch in every aspect you can think of. Yeah. You know, I think uh, I, I think another one. So so if, for me, if like Sex of the City is is an example of like of kind of an odd one, I think one that kind of worked out was X-Files. OK, mm. you know, and you can send me hate mail for that, because I know that there are some people that disagree with that. But I think X-Files, it, in a sense, like they they did like two part episodes anyway. So it just kind of felt like like those with curse words. <laughs> OK, right. OK, but, no, I but, don't you, but don't you think if they're going to be given a movie and a budget and it's something like the X-Files that there has to be a, a larger payoff, especially when you've like you've established a mythology that you don't really want to pay off anyway. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't you think there has to be because that was the thing I remember seeing the X Files movie was like you know I liked it, but it's not really the best two hour episode I've ever seen of X Files. I would much no, rather it's gotten, not. I would much rather have gotten a Monster of the Week episode as opposed to the mythology, but they chose mythology. Mm -hmm. Was the show still on the air when the first movie came out? I want to say no. Yes, no. The, when was the first it? one came out, it was. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. So, when the second one came out, which I, which many people don't remember, there was a second one. Right, this, which wasn't all that long ago, relatively. No, it wasn't. I heard it's really, really bad. And so the second one came out when it wasn't on the air anymore, but it was before the, the follow-up season, the revivals that oh. came out. Yeah, yeah. I stumbled on a handful of things like that. Yeah, <laughs> sort of like Beavis and Butthead did at one point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, did, you know, the movie a, Beavis that's and another Butthead. One. That's America. true. I forgot yeah. about that one. Yeah. I for, and people love that movie. Too, yes, but you know, I I never seen it. But. It's not bad <laughs> if you like Beavis yeah. Butthead, right? But Ted, yeah, yeah. One of the other revivals I stumbled upon was Lizzie McGuire had a show, like right, had a yeah. movie, yeah. right around the time of the show, and and now that one's coming back as a revival series on Disney Plus. Mm, okay, mm -hmm. and then Veronica Mars had a similar situation where show ended after three seasons, and then. They had a, was it a semi crowdfunded movie? Is that right? <laughs> Wasn't that a, like a Kickstarter thing? Does anyone else yeah, remember this? Been. Yeah, For which I one? remember it, Veronica, yeah, Veronica Mars. Veronica Mars. Yeah, they definitely did that to bring the show back. Right. I thought it was like they did like a mini series. There was a movie and then there was a small like mini series right. on, as that, well. Yeah, that's what I'm getting to is that the movie though I think was actually partially crowdfunded. I feel like it went to Kickstarter or something uh, to get yeah, it going. It and did. then that became a movie in 2014. Which then became the revival series on Hulu in 2019. Okay, but that are was we talking last year. Yes. The revival series was last year. Yeah, yeah. Oh are we my talking god! About, are we talking about revivals or like shows that hit a pinnacle of their greatness? Like, for example, um, Simpsons and South Park, in which they do a movie at the mm -hmm. height of their greatness, and then we don't see a movie ever again. Right. As opposed to what Veronica well, Mars that, did was it was like the the fans felt that the show went away too soon. So oh, the yeah. creator tried to bring it back, you know? Oh yeah. No, Veronica Mars took took a while to come out. Yeah. I mean many years to come out. The Simpsons and South Park is an interesting one because in my in with my memory, I think I, I think they're kind of in different camps in this sense. I think that South Park came out relatively quickly. Yeah. Right. South Park was mm -hmm. what, 96, 97 when the show started. And then the movies, I think it's 99. That's correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so within two years, two, two and a half years or so, that movie's out in theaters. Simpsons. I, I, I couldn't tell you how many years the show was on the air before that movie came out. And that was one that I remember that there was. Our talk engineer for, can probably tell us. Oh, 2007. There, there was. There was talk for a lot of for a lot of years of like they're doing a Simpsons movie, they're doing a Simpsons right. movie, they're doing a Simpsons movie, and nothing came into fruition until it came into fruition. Yeah. Right. It was it was almost yep. a thing of where with the Simpsons movie it was talked about forever, and it was one of those you know basically every writer who ever was on it had a hand in it, and that's what was taking so long. Yeah. Um. The sto the story that 
you know, uh, our engineer is a huge Simpsons fan. And the story that, that he told me was that along the way in the writer's room, sometimes they would have ideas that they would kind of bank for like, mm-hmm. like this, this, this would be good for a movie. And they, and they just had like this runoff file mm-hmm. essentially that they, that they um, had ready for it. Now I've never seen the movie. I don't know how much of it made it in, you know, and I also don't know how sig- I've, I've heard people like the movie a lot. I don't know. I don't know how much it feels like the show. Well, I remember Tommy and I, I, I was take, I was trying to get Tommy to go with me and he was like, I don't know. I don't want to go. I yeah. got to just seeing that. And then you got, <laughs> <laughs> then you got done. You're like, that was better than I thought it was going to be. Oh, right. big time. <laughs> so it was 12 years after it, 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 it aired that they did a movie. Like no one was looking 18. for that. No one was looking for that. Yeah. Right. 18 years. 18 years. 18, 18 years, years according corrected. to our engineer. 18 years. From the premiere years. of Simpsons to the movie being in theaters. Yeah. Who's looking for this? Right. That's insane. Yeah, I mean that that that's where like I, I'm just I'm not educated enough to talk about the Simpsons movie because by that point I like I stopped watching the Simpsons at like season ten, right? Like that's mm-hmm. that's when my enthusiasm kind of like dropped off for it a little bit. So by that point when the movie came out, like I was sort of like ah, eh, I'm not really a huge fan anymore, you know. But I think though that there there there's also an interesting component to them getting movies where it's it's like now now we're possibly also introducing this idea to more eyes right Mm -hmm. in order for the movie to be successful like in a lot of cases more people need to see the movie than they had to watch the show from the Mm -hmm. do well depending on the show right Mm -hmm. so it's also like so how do you creatively how do you make that work like how do you how do you walk that line of like of like Frank, like you were saying with, with exile stuff, like there's mythology stuff in here, but also how do you make it accessible to somebody who may go in? That's not watching the show necessarily. Right. Well, I mean, which I, I've, I've, which I've been that person in a few instances. Right. Well, I was going to bring up when, I, when we were thinking about this, this topic, I was thinking of a recent, a recent one that was kind of people had asked for it for years, people had asked for it for years. And then it finally came about, which was the, the, the Deadwood movie. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, and it, it's it again, it's one of those where they try and give you a little bit of background of like what has gone on before without doing a previously on Deadwood, you know, 10 years ago or whatever when it came out. But, you know, they try and give you the idea of these are the, the these are relationships and these are characters. But I to me, I mean, I enjoyed the movie and it was nice to see everyone back in Deadwood, mm-hmm. you know, and Al being Al and and, and uh, you know, Seth being Seth and the rest of them. But to me, it was. It was kind of like the way that the series ended, you know, sucked because you wanted more of it and it sort of ends at a place where there's definitely more story to tell. And then when they come back to tell the story in the movie, it's kind of a thing where it almost is like a remix of the finale, wouldn't you say, Tommy? Oh, interesting. Okay. I didn't watch it. I I felt it was too long. They waited (laughs) for those stars to get too big Uh and it it could have been so much better had they have giving it to us 10 years earlier. I mean, it's, it's like, to me, it's, it's like a 12 inch dance remix single of a song that you love. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love okay. those. Uh, right. Okay. See, there you go. Yeah. So it's, it's got, <laughs> it's got parts of the beat that you know full well, and you can groove to. And then you're like, well, why do they throw this in here? Mm. You know, but it, it, it definitely to me, because of the fact that, you know, I guess they didn't want to advance the story too far because again, there's nothing they can really do. <laughs> That's what happened. So I, I like the Deadwood movie and I think it's great, but I also think it's a situation where I, you know, I kind of agree with, with Tommy that it should have been sooner, but I did like it for the fact that we got to spend time with those characters again. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, you love everything Deadwood is what you're telling me, no matter how they, no matter how they package it. Well, there's that too. <laughs> and then, so that one was a 13 year gap okay. See? between the show ending and the movie uh, appearing. So the show ran 2004 to 2006, three seasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's like, me leaving to get my doctorate and then coming back to see the season finale. Is that what that, that would occur? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which apparently maybe you've seen a little bit of yeah. anyway. Yeah. From the sound of it. No, I have. I was mad. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, if you saw the movie, apparently it's also a little bit, it's, it feels a little bit like one of those 80s clip shows when, you know, <laughs> Michelle Tanner would get amnesia and then you would see all the other episodes when they're trying to like, don't you remember your birthday? Yeah, right. When you dress up <laughs> yeah, like the Flintstones, yeah. that's a full house reference. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. 
that was that that was one that that I recently thought of that I that I took time to like you know check out because yes I love all things Deadwood in its forms so <laughs> therefore I, I was super excited about it but you know that was my response was just it didn't you know I, it it was kind of like the ending I already got which I didn't really need repackaged and I feel okay. like I feel like it's one of those things where you know it's kind of like trying to write a good sequel right we we do, you can't stray too far from the formula that made the the original great. Or people, mm -hmm. you know, bitch and moan. But if you don't go far enough, then you're basically just retelling me the story you told me before. Yeah. Yes. Right. And I think that's a, I think it's a hard thing to do with your with a you know with a coming back for a uh, a movie, you know, for for a, a series. I think that's kind of a tough thing to do unless you know full well what your story is. And oh, by the way, these characters are there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but oh my god, that was such a tough sell because you had a series in which. The town changed month to month, at least in their time, or week to week. <laughs> right. To think that certain people would stay there after 13 years? <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> the well, but but again, that's the, again, that's the thing about it. Without, I, don't, I wouldn't spoil this for anything for anybody. But, I mean, the events of the finale and how everything ends up to where it ends up in the, in the movie is kind of like, well, this should have been the next week. <laughs> Yes. Not not, yes. Thir not not thirteen years later. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What have these people been doing for thirteen right. years? Are they are they stuck in a loop? What's going that on? That was going to be my question. How how much how much of of like in story time aged between the finale and the movie? Oh, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because yeah. it's it's. I mean, you know, if you've if you've if you're familiar with uh with let's just go with Tim Oliphant's character with you're looking with Seth Bullock. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at pictures of Seth Bullock when the series ends and how he is in the in the movie, it's you. A lot of time has passed, and he's no longer the sheriff or whatever. He's a he's a he's a U.S. marshal, right? So, you know, it's one of those things where yeah, a significant amount of time because there's that you know there's also a, a, a yeah the a, actors don't look the same. I mean, like you, you almost you have to do it. Well, yeah, on some level. Well, because it's one of those things where, like, for example, there's a character that's introduced, a, a young girl that's introduced in the beginning, like the first is it the first episode. Mm -hmm. where the, yeah the family gets the family gets slaughtered on the way they're trying to move for like they're they they think they, they think the whole family's been wiped out and she's the only one that survives and she's yeah, taken first in, episode yeah, she's taken in episode. by um alma garrett by uh polly mm -hmm. what's not what's her name polly walker i'll look at her good okay but anyway anyway she's in the the, the movie and she's obviously much older by this point so obviously right. it was a chunk of time it's not like comic books where you know the the children age while well, the the main characters stay thirty five or thirty three. Yeah, or whatever. <laughs> sure, yeah. okay. So yeah, now everyone aged, and it, it, okay. like I said, but but I agree with Tommy. It's one of those things where it should have been the next week was what happened in the movie as opposed to thirteen mm -hmm. years later. But again, that's not their fault that HBO canceled them. It's HBO's yeah. fault. It always will be. Right. Oh yeah, big time. Molly Parker. So, Molly Parker. Thank you. Yeah. So I mean. That's an interesting one in the sense that I'm saying interesting so much, but, but like that was <laughs> that, so that wasn't in theaters, right? That was, that was a TV show on a station that on the, that station yeah, the, greenlit the movie that mm -hmm. aired on that same station. So it was, it, it was, um, curated a little bit for the people that they knew they still had an appetite for it. They still had an audience for it, right? There wasn't a whole lot of, of, I'm, I'm guessing of let's, you know, we got to put stuff in here so it doesn't so for, for the person that's coming into it for the first time. No, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those, but it's also one of those ones that was talked about for years and years and years after the fact, because of the fact the way it ended, mm -hmm. people were, you know, saying we need to have some kind of closure on Deadwood because we didn't get one. Right. Okay. So, it's, it's more surprising that HBO even acknowledged the fans on that point. Because they've mm -hmm. done that many a show with right. no uh, clear resolution. They'll just end it and be done. Uh, a yeah. glaring example of, I was going to say Sopranos, but <laughs> but yeah, I, I was surprised that they even made it. 13 years after the fact, who would even thought that would have come out? And a lot of the characters, I would assume that started in Deadwood could have pooled their money together and make their own movie the way they got mm -hmm. famous as a result of their acting careers. Well, it was funny to me because I know the show has a following, but I, but you know, it it didn't appear to be very loud. The clamoring for it, uh, I, at least, at least the, in my circles, I didn't know. I didn't know that there was still after so long that that like when I heard it was it was finally happening. I was like, really? Like, like pe people still want that? Like, 
you know, yeah, like, yeah. we haven't moved on yet. No, yeah. Yeah, a no, lot they, of stars came out of that series. Yes. Yeah. So. Frank hey. and Tommy, how would you compare this one to Firefly than Serenity? Oh. Ooh. Ah. That's as far so, as so Serenity, <laughs> that's one of uh, that's one of those it, it, that's in the category of of movie I went to see uh-huh. having not watched the show. Oh right? really? Yeah. I think I think I saw the pilot of Firefly <laughs> okay. and then didn't watch the show at all. But this was an instance where I went because I knew that there was that there was a loud following passionate fan base for this and I was kind of rooting them on. So I'm like, so like I, I wanted to go give it money. Okay. Okay. You know, and I'm just saying, so there's, there's been a few instances of that, but go on a- answer Clifton's question about like, how, like how does Deadwood compare to the Serenity movie? Oh no. Serenity is a great movie if we, uh, from the time. It didn't wait that long to produce a movie from it, but it, as much as people loved, um, Firefly, you would have mm-hmm. thought they would have came out in droves like Star Trek, but nope. It started and ended with that one movie. Yeah. Uh, the box office wasn't as strong as you thought the fans were clamoring to see it. So um, great story, though, mind you. Tied up uh, a lot of um, loose ends. You knew certain things. Characters had their arc in that movie. Um, but I, I felt yeah. the clamoring or the audience for it wasn't as large as you thought it would be right which was weird because it's a little disproportionate uh, it, to, to the volume that they had yes yes yeah i thought I mean, so it, too i thought i thought for sure that movie was going to do well yeah i mean it made you see it based upon the um the audience outcry correct yeah look, I, I was it was dating somebody that was into it also at the time oh. but <laughs> okay, okay, okay yeah gotcha but but i think it's, for me it's a successful movie because i because like i said i had seen the pilot and I wasn't lost in that movie at all. And so I think, it, it, you know, and I know that there's stuff in there that I didn't catch. I know that there's stuff for you guys that, you know, love Firefly and are mm-hmm. huge Joss Whedon fans and stuff like that. But I think it, like I thought it was well made because for me, uh, like my experience with it was I wasn't lost at all. Well, I mean, I my experience was I'd, I'd watched the show. I'd watched all of it and then, you know, bought the, the DVD or Blu-ray, whatever, it, or DVD at the time. Came mm-hmm. out and had like three extra episodes that didn't air because Fox. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I forgot. Fox didn't do a very good job of, uh, they screwed it up. They didn't, they didn't promote it. They didn't, they promoted it well, but when it came time to airing, they put it on Friday nights, which is basically the death sentence for TV mm-hmm. because people don't stay home to watch TV. And, and I guess at the time, um, you know, we didn't have, you know, we didn't have a system where they, they could get people who were DVRing it or recording it or whatever. So it went away. It was then, and then there was talk of a movie and then Serenity shows up. And I remember I was still working at the comic shop. I was set up uh, at a convention and we broke down the convention and my boss told me, hey, listen, we got tickets to go see Serenity ahead of time. We're seeing it a week before everybody else. Do you want to go? And I was like, are you kidding? Absolutely. I want to go. I love it. So it was me and, and our friend Devon. Devon had no idea, never seen any of, of, of Firefly. So um, it's him and my boss and, and Devon and we're sitting there and we're watching the movie and, and you know and and I remember asking him after the fact like what did you think about <laughs> the movie and he's like no I he's like I said I wasn't he told me the same thing he wasn't lost um, they did a good job of setting up the premise and you get you know good feel for the characters and when things happen that are you know that are devastating to the characters you you feel for the characters so it does a good job of being a self-contained story but same you know playing that bigger universe that's created in Firefly yeah. Again, conversely, I, I I made a deal with anyone who had seen Firefly. I said, "Listen, if you want to go see Serenity with me, I'll go see it with you." Mm-hmm. And I and and I saw it with Tommy. Yeah, you keep dragging me to stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, so I saw it with Tommy, and I saw it for Tommy for one scene in particular. I just wanted to get his reaction oh. to one to one yeah. scene in particular. Yeah. So you just, you it, just sat and looked at Tommy for one yeah. scene. I just <laughs> waited. I just waited to the. I didn't look at him. I waited for that scene. And got the reaction I thought I would get. And the same thing with another friend of ours who, who that same thing, he was my roommate at the time. We used to watch Firefly together and the same right. thing where I just waited for that scene and he had the same like, are you kidding? What happened? <laughs> you know, that, that whole thing was, you know, was <laughs> a yeah. reason. I mean, yeah. I love the movie. I think, I think Serenity is a great movie on its own, but the fact that it's, it's from a, from a TV show that I thought was, you know, self-contained, we would never get anymore. And then to get a movie that good 
that to me is one of the best examples of why you should give sometimes give these TV shows that don't necessarily work out a movie to wrap things up or a movie to do something with because it definitely it definitely advances the universe I think with the operative and the other right. stuff that goes on in it you know Mr. S- the, was it Mr. Signal that that whole bit yeah the signal you know. oh, oh yeah, but yeah, it, yeah, and yeah. It, and it also feels Mr. like universe. a movie too it doesn't feel just like an episode with a bigger budget right no it doesn't no. it doesn't feel like um. It, it doesn't feel like when they did the Power Rangers movie, right? And, and <laughs> right. suddenly, like, all the suits are, are, like, awesome, and they're not just wearing spandex. But we don't, <laughs> right? True, but at the yeah. same time, the, uh, the only thing I would, I would defend the Power Rangers movie is that, I mean, Firefly, for the most part, or Serenity, isn't going to, um, you're not selling the kids on the round of toys coming out of Serenity or Firefly, right? I right. think if it no. was, I think if it was designed, I mean, because a lot of that stuff, you know, for example, um, you and I, Zach, how many times did we watch the opener to the G.I. Joe movie with the trouble bubble and talk about Oh, when they're trying excited. to blow up the Statue of Liberty? Yeah. I love that, that open. Uh, I do too. With Snake Eyes <laughs> taking over the trouble bubble? That's a brilliant yeah. scene. Oh, yeah. That was, but the idea that, that, that no, you know, up until that point, I think we had, we may have had trouble bubble in the episodes, but the idea that, you know, there were going to be new toys coming out of that movie or there was going to yeah. be like, uh, Cobra la 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 la, oh, yeah. you know, get those, those figures yeah. too. Yeah. You know, all that kind of stuff is, was, you know, that's another driver for making those kind of movies. Yeah. But you don't really Transformers get Transformers as well was, it was exactly, yeah. I mean, I, there's, th- there's, there's a DVD extra on uh-huh. uh, where they talk to the writer of the Transformers movie, Flint Dilly, and he, and he's actually like, he's like, yeah, like my marching orders was that like, you know, the, the 84 toy line was getting discontinued and they had a whole bunch of other characters from it coming out in 86 87 right. that they wanted to showcase and that's when you get first appearance of hot rod and ultra magnus and mm-hmm. blur and cup and springer rc who never got a toy then but right, right. yeah yeah it's like hey kids watch all your favorite toys die in this opening scene <laughs> yeah. so I now know. buy these new toys yes. right yeah. But there'll be new friends to replace your old friends because yeah, that's exactly. how life works <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's in fact, yeah, no, they did that in the movie, too. Here's Wheeljack on the ground with a hole in his chest. Uh, <laughs> oh, boo. Ironhide, oh. shot execution style. Yep. Oh, Ironhide's a rough one. <laughs> Bram. Instruments of Destruction. I love that movie. We're going to do My a spotlight on that movie Bram. sometime. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, going to Serenity. So Serenity was trying to do and did not succeed in what Star Trek actually did and did succeed in, Mm -hmm. which Star Trek was dead in the water as a property, as a franchise before it hit the movie theaters following on, I mean, success of Star Wars, honestly, I think like Star Wars is a huge hit. So other things started looking at like what sci-fi stuff do we have? And, and Paramount still had Star Trek and went with it. But that like resurrected it as a property, mm. right? Because that was about a thirteen-year gap, I think, between the show going off the air. Maybe about a ten-year gap between the show going off the air and the movie hitting theaters. And then ever since then, though, like it's been a it's been a franchise juggernaut ever right. since that the first movie now, hit. Question about that, though. I mean, so th- there were conventions in inter- in the intervening years, right? Since the show and the movie, right? I believe so. Yes. Yeah, because like San Diego started at the same time, started in, in that gap. Okay, because I remember hearing, I, I it might have been like an old Entertainment Tonight interview or something like that, where they, they were saying that the conventions was a big part of it, where like the fan base for, for the show that had been off the air for years and years and years, apparently like never went away. You know, and yeah, and coupled with the fact that Star Wars was this monster hit, they right. were like, oh, well, maybe we can get something out of Star Trek. Right, this, but there was, yeah. a, but I mean, I also feel like, I mean, in a weird way, like Star Trek. I remember before, say, we got like the movies. We had the movies where they were the original cast, and then we, you know, in what like eighty eight or eighty nine, we get new TNG, we get Next Generation, eighty seven, I think. Right? Is eighty seven? Is that early? I think okay. so. But in it, like we with the movies, you get the, the the idea of them together and stuff. And then, I guess my thing was. In my mind, you, you know, you still had them in comics. You still had them in, in paperback books. So I guess it was not, you know, as far as I know, there was no, there was no gap between those. Right. But the actual movie, I mean, I th- one thing about Star Trek, the motion picture, which I always think is, is funny that it's, it's phrased that way, 
is the <laughs> idea that that the motion picture is kind of it's a pretty cerebral movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's not. I mean, if you're going to combat Star Wars, what's, which is a juggernaut now at the time that you know that basically you know takes the world by storm, that's not. It was kind of an odd choice to go with that one first. And then when you, then you, especially when you put it side by side with Wrath of Khan, yeah, you know, I do think mm-hmm. that of the two, it's kind of, you know, I've always what? thought, I mean, I like the motion picture, but it's not, you know, it's not Wrath of Khan or even, or, even, even Wrath of Khan in comparison to Star Wars, I think is super cerebral and super, um, they're, they're quieter movies and sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah I'm kind of builds off of what Zach was saying earlier about how Transformers and G.I. Joe, the production value went up. But like mm-hmm. Zach was actually correct. It was, th- it almost, it was, you saw a precursor to the Netflix effect mm-hmm. in Star Trek in which through syndication and repeat, the, it never went off the air, even though it stopped being produced and they went to conventions. It built a fan base over the course of 10 years. And then when they finally decided to do something, all the bells and whistles. I mean, they had new suits. Uh, the the transport yeah. effect was glowing. They had everything about it was visually appealing. Nothing of it resembled the show as far as the look of it went. And that was that was a, a harsh departure for me as a kid because, you know, I, I'm the little brother of a big Trekkie. You know, and and I like like Mr. Spock was one of my favorite characters as a kid because I just liked the visual of him. Right. And then once I saw the movies, like when I when my brother would be watching him on TV and I would come into the room, I would be like, why isn't he in a blue shirt? Like, where's all the colors? Like, why are they in this drab maroon? (laughs) You know. And so that is one of those things where like there is a dance for of it feeling like the show and not feeling like the show. Yeah, I agree with that too. The fact that you don't have the designations of the, the different, uh, the different colors of show who's in, who's in, uh, the captain and who's the different like science officer or medical officer. Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird choice. I agree. And, and it's carried through all of them until the, till the Abrams movies, like even, even the next generation movies had a version of it where like they had, the designation color was like was the, was the turtleneck collar that was under this onesie that was uniformed over everybody. Yeah, you but, know? They do, but they, I mean, TNG at first let's get back to the idea of color designation for yeah yeah for science characters. officers yellow mm-hmm. oh, no excuse me science officers are blue mm-hmm. security's yellow um, yeah higher uh, like captains are red animals are red yeah TNG definitely comes back to it. maroon yeah definitely mm-hmm. comes back to it yeah but no the glare it. That's what made the motion pictures such a, like a what a huh? It's all, all what you said earlier, Zach. That's why that's why you see, Khan such a, a departure from the first one because I think they went back to their roots, based mm-hmm. upon um the reaction, the story, the process. You know, well, I'd argue that the the first one definitely is not really, it's not. I don't think you have to be a fan to watch the first one. I think you can watch the first one and not really need to be a fan per se of the show yeah i think the second one, you absolutely have to be a fan of the show yeah the second it. one i think the second one steers tor- steers at the fan base a lot more yeah i oh, think it's definitely playing so. to them yeah. much more than obviously than the first one so yeah but that's the thing i i, I went again also thinking about this i don't know how much you know how much broad appeal when you know we talked about it in other things or i've said it before in other things where we talked about the idea of you know if you're gonna if you're going to give me a TV show every week and you're going to give me a movie and you want me to plunk down the time and the money to go do it, to go watch it or whatever, it has to be something <laughs> more than what I would get at home, right? It's almost like, to me, a lot of times I think of like um, a movie for a TV show being an annual, right? Because in the old days, an oh, okay. annual, because an annual, like now, you know, an annual, like modern comics cost the cost of what an annual might have cost at one point, right? Mm. Cause you, but you'd get twice as much story or, you know, you get a different art team or you get like, you know, pinups or all that cool stuff in the back. Mm. But, you know, in this case, I, I think it's one of those things where uh, same thing with a movie where if you're going to spend the time and the money, then you better give me, you know, a bigger bang for my buck than if I'm spending less or if I'm just home watching like over the air TV. Right. Which I know is not over the air TV anymore, but I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> 
No, it's a it's a good comparison. I think. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, to to to, to do the, the annual as in the comic books model, mm-hmm. which even that's changed a little bit somewhat, too. Oh, I think, definitely. I think, yeah. annu- I think annuals are not I think annuals today are not quite the same the way they were when, like, they were doing Fantastic Four annuals and stuff like that. I think annuals today tend to be a lot more like like a series of shorts. Right. Mm-hmm. That is just, just packed with like a ton of different creators. Right. Doing something. But yeah. I don't yeah. know. It's a, it's a, it's a tough it's a tough line to walk, and I th- I think I think Frank, like y- you're comparing it to sequels, was kind of perfect. Where it's sort of sequels are tough in that sense because you gotta you you have to make something that's exactly what people like about it, mm-hmm. and also completely different at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you the know? other thing is you don't really know. I mean, not every single time, like not every time you make a movie for a TV show, are you going to get Star Trek the the, the motion picture and then you get to make like eight of them, you know? And yeah. even, even, even with the, 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 the ones that we got, you could still argue that they're not really about anybody, but Kirk, Spock and McCoy. Yeah. You know, they're I, not, I, like, I would, I would say that too. And similar to X-Files also, I would, as much as I like wrath of Khan, wrath of Khan may be my favorite. And I like first contact as well. Um, there are still episodes within the show that I put above all of those things, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So what about um, I just I just want to tell this other story really quick, because the other movie that I saw having not seen anything was the Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie, <laughs> which is <laughs> like, you know, to, to me, I, I was it's not my cup of tea, but I was such a, I'm such a lover of animation. It was important for me that that movie did well mm-hmm. so that so that executives could see, hey, animated movies do well that aren't Pixar. And we can do other things. And like, we're still kind of fighting that battle. But what about, so what, what about now movies that are TV sh- movies that are made that are adaptations of a TV show mm. or a reboot of a show of some kind? Like, let's get into this one a little bit too, because to me, there's a little bit also that the, the, there's an idea that I kind of find offensive. That <laughs> the, 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 the idea that like that this thing that I love has to graduate to be in has to graduate to be a movie and that's that's like its real arrival right like when when the last airbender <laughs> yeah. right the idea that it's getting made into a movie and that somehow like like it, like you know everything gets taken seriously when suddenly it's shot with live action actors and everything and and, and it's offensive to me in the sense that like you have this this beautiful thing that's you know you're distilling 10 hours of a first season into an hour and a half movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Sure. Something might I, get lost. And I'm, 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> some, some stuff's not going to make it in. And I'm like, and that's an instance where, and I don't, I don't hate this concept at all in general, but like, that's just an instance of, of mine where I'm just like, just watch the show. Sure. <laughs> oh no, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially when it's so good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's when it's this great, perfect thing. But yeah, no, I agree that there's, you know, that's a great, that's a great choice is the, you know, Avatar The Last Airbender, especially when you, you know, I remember hearing uh, Shyamalan talk about, well, it's, it's on 24 seven in our house and my kids love it. And we, you know, and then to get so much of it, not right. Yeah. <laughs> I, again, I remember getting out of the theater that night going, no, you, you can't tell me that your kids love it and you understand it. And no, you don't, there's a lot of things you, you just don't get, you know. Uh, about this about the franchise about the characters just didn't you know it just didn't work and again then the idea to try to distill an entire season down a couple hours you know no the fact that he he changed the pronunciation of ang to ang (laughs) i always thought was weird because it's not like a comic book where i'm where i'm inferring the pronunciation by reading it Mm -hmm. i'm i'm hearing his name said over 10 hours in this first season right many times like right it's it's pronounced ang (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone pronounces it that way. Everyone. Yeah, that's his name. Everyone. Like, yeah. When they're not I think calling. His, I think his justification was him saying that they had pronounced it wrong. I think he was saying, like, if you look at the language, this is how it would have been pronounced. <laughs> well, that's, that's, right. that's, that's just and, foolish. And so, the, so the, they had it wrong on the show. Yeah. I believe is what his thinking was. Well, yeah, that's just silly. <laughs> and I don't hate that movie as much as other people do. I think that there are aspects in that movie that are fun, but it's just it's like. But just it was destined to fail in execution in that sense to me, because like 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 you said, Frank, like some stuff's going to get left out. 
Mm-hmm. And that stuff Absolutely. that gets left out is really great stuff. Well, yeah. You know. No, nah, I just thought comes across as what exactly was I thought is the dude was pretentious. He felt he could make a better material than what he had seen. Mm-hmm. And he tried to say that. And a simple simplification of that is simply the name. I mean, hell, you hear the name in every episode mm-hmm. five seconds into the show in the intro. Right. Yeah. yeah. So for him to um, steamroll simply and the name is. I, th- I thought it was in such good hands, too, because like. Six cents is great. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, and, and the fact that he was a fan, and because I mean, like, if you if you yeah. watch the second season DVD extras, he is all over these things, like praising the show. And I was like, oh, OK, yeah. like he loved he loves the material. And and that's still very, very well be. I just think, you know, so, something happened there. Yeah, there's a disconnect somewhere that didn't work, is, quite work. I mean, so do you guys have any any reboots or, or adaptations that, that were successful, that worked, that we liked that? Yeah, I, I have a few. OK, yeah, go ahead. Um, Fugitive. Yeah. Oh, that's Fugitive is an excellent TV, yeah, that's a great TV one. adaptation to film. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Nope. I like that. That's one a lot. best picture nominee. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, and most yep. many people don't know it was a show, but it yeah. was a show. Yeah, it's a great it one. Yeah, that's a great choice. That's a that's a really good one, Clifton. Yeah, yeah. I'm impressed with your list with the first one out of the gate. What else you got? <laughs> <laughs> well, I stumbled over one. This is in a fuzzy area between how we've split these two things up of of revivals or adaptations, and uh, I'm stealing it from you, Zach, because it's one of your favorite things in the world, and it's oh. Mission Impossible. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's, it's it's in like a hazy area between it the is. two, where it's like kind of could be a continuation <laughs> from the show, but it's really kind of a reboot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, I love Mission Impossible. <laughs> it's I, your favorite I, thing. In I the was world. watching Mission Impossible two yesterday when we were recording. Is, is Fallout <laughs> on right now? Like on a TV in your room? It may be. It very well may be. <laughs> God, I can't wait for seven and eight. Anyway, no, that's a good one. That's a that's a really great one too. God, how did I forget about that? <laughs> I'm talking about Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and you you hit me with Mission <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> but yeah, I have, like, I have some other things that I thought of, like 21 Jump Street. Yeah. yeah, Which okay. is a very Duh. different creature yeah. from what the show is, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's a good um, one. They're both fun yeah. movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, Charlie's Angels. Yep. Oh, yeah. Which became a sensation in its first movie attempt back in the early 2000s. Yeah. Yeah, and then I have a couple weird, but I like them anyway. Ones and yeah. and one is the Brady Bunch films. Those are fun. I was gonna bring up the Brady Bunch. I love the Brady Bunch. Yeah, I like the Brady Bunch movie. Yeah, I mean they definitely approached it as being parodies of the show. Yeah, but like they had a lot of heart. And they they always cracked me up. Yeah, and then Miami Vice. Oh yeah, the the Michael Mann oh, the Miami Michael Mann Vice, movie. which is like a weird kind of deconstruction, like super serious version of of the old Tubbs and Crackett. Yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. I liked but, it, but of his yeah. own thing too, which is weird. It's like <laughs> it's it's like a gritty take of his own thing, right? Because it because it was created by him as well, right? The TV show that I did not remember. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did not remember that. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's like a deconstruction of his own thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's, yeah. I thought you were gonna say Bever- didn't they do a Beverly Hillbillies movie too? Oh, they, they did. They there's did. tons. There's <laughs> yeah. tons mm-hmm. in like like McHale's Navy yeah. and Beverly Hillbillies and Land of the Lost. There, mm-hmm. yeah, like there was a period, and, and for the life of me, I remember saying to my mom because I also went through like a Gilligan's Island phase. I was like, "Where's my Gilligan's <laughs> Island movie?" Sure. <laughs> I, Are like, they still to, talking about that? To I, I can't believe it hasn't been done to this <laughs> no. to this day. I really can't. I can't believe that we haven't gotten like Will Ferrell like playing the skipper, <laughs> right? And like <laughs> you know what I mean, and like Jesse Eisenberg yeah. is Gilligan or something, right? Like, right, Michael Sarah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, no, you guys talking about a reboot, but they did continue to show in movie form though. They did. That is true. Yeah. They did. Like yeah. there was a one. There was the, some globe trotters. Yeah, well, I was say versus yeah. the gold. <laughs> versus As the did Brady Bunch too, right? Yes. Brady they Bunch did, had, a right. cu- had a couple yes. of reunion movies, right? Yes. Yes. Doesn't yeah. Carol save a group of minors or something by singing? That's in a very Brady Christmas. Yes. Thank you. Because because okay. Mike Michael Brady's trapped in a mine that he's That's doing some is. architecture something <laughs> okay. for. Of course. So this was. is what I get confused about because there's a lot of talk of reunion shows too, like Friends and Fresh Prince of Bel Air and everything like that, right? Like, are those movies? What? what like, what's a re- what's a cast reunion supposed to be? Clip show with the cast. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, we like, get aspects I, like, of I'm, this stuff. I'm always so confused about it because like, because to me, the Brady Bunch reunion was those movies. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and then so and they're talking about like Fresh Prince of Bel Air reunion. And I'm like, was that just them sitting in a room talking about it? Right. Or is it like another episode that they're doing? No, I think I think because there was one. I know there was one. Uh, there was a Return of Mayberry film that was made mm. for TV. Same thing where it was a good, tw- you know, twenty years after it gone off the air. But it was it was it was touted as a reunion movie because they right. got pretty much everyone that was still alive yeah. at that point to come back for it. So no, I think I mean if it's the cast sitting around reminiscing, that's different than you know we're going to act and be. I'm going to you know play all the parts that we played before. That's a little different. Yeah, but. But along those lines of, of TV reboots that I think work that, that should have gotten a better shot mm-hmm. that I really like was I thought the, the, the Steve Carell Get Smart was pretty good. Has anyone ever seen that? Yeah, it is fun. I haven't you know, seen but, it, but I like the people yeah. in it. I should yeah, check no, it ev- out. Everybody that it's in, it's great for their, you know, who they're playing from. And I went through phases as a kid when Get Smart was like on like TBS Superstation on. It was on in the afternoon. <laughs> right, I them. watched yeah. the reruns growing up. Yeah, yeah. So I saw a ton of those and I always liked the show. I liked the... Uh, um, Don Adams, you know, Don Adams is Maxwell Smart. Yeah. But they do a nice job of updating it. It, it, you know, it works for the whole premise of him being kind of bumbly, but kind of being competent at the same time. And yeah, the, I think the rocks in it. I think if you made it now, yeah. it would be a much, you know, a much more popular movie. Oh, sure. Bill, Bill Murray has a great cameo in it. Anne Hathaway's in it. Alan Arkin's awesome. In yeah. It. Alan Arkin's great in it. Yeah. So it's one of those things where I think, I, you know, it's, it's someone who, like, like Clifton was saying, grew up on watching a lot of the old reruns. I, I thought, for you know, for a movie that I'm like, oh, they're making Get Smart, and then I remember it was on. I started watching it, and the next thing I know, I'm watching all of it. Right. <laughs> when I didn't <laughs> yeah. really expect to do that, I think that one really works. It didn't. I'm surprised that it didn't do better than it, it should have. You know, because again, I think it's the, it's a concept that you could easily, you know, it's, yeah. it's Mel Brooks, right? Mel Brooks and uh, Buck Henry. Oh, no, that, I I, that I didn't know. Yeah, I know Buck Henry were for it. It was behind a lot of it, and then I think Mel Brooks was like produced it. Because they wanted it was one of, you know around the time when Mel Brooks was kind of at the height of his power was really yeah. cranking out hit after hit yeah and he wanted to do a, a spoof on the spy you know the Bond bit so I mean it is a it's a stupid thing to say but uh, but it is it, it because all of those people are mega stars and they were certainly mm-hmm. big then but I mean their star all of their stars got way brighter right exactly that's why <laughs> I'm like, the I, fact. I think it, it was a little ahead of you know it, you know granted if you wait too much that's the other thing about some of these in this you know quote-unquote nostalgia movies if you wait too long i don't think i think you're gonna like with i think we've talked about it before with like the lone ranger mm-hmm. that comes that comes a point where that shelf life expires and the people that might have been interested in it it's been so far gone from what it first you know first came from yeah. or first originated they're like people like oh yeah i never i remember the lone ranger but i don't have any interest in seeing it yeah, Bewitched, um, yeah, which was made, you know, I don't know, 40, 50 years after the fact. And, ma- and made by <laughs> some very good uh, direct. I mean, Nora Ephron writes and directs that movie, and she's one of my favorite writers ever. Like, she's, she's you know, in my, my own personal Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. And I still haven't seen that because it's, it's, a, it's a weird kind of meta one where, like, the Bewitched show exists in right. the movie universe, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. But going back real quick, Get Smart had a movie after it got um canceled. It was the nude bomb. Oh no, is it is that that is a Get Smart. But they also rebooted it too. Yeah, they rebooted it like twenty years after that. But they rebooted yes. it with um at, at when Fox was new, when Fox was uh the Fox um T V channel was new. Yeah. But yeah, they but had, they they did the whole um it went through a cycle, it got canceled. The revival based upon the old characters that did it twice. And mm-hmm. then when that didn't take, then you saw the one with The Rock and um, Steve Carell uh, years later, okay. in which they try to revive the concept of it. But no, you're 100% mm-hmm. correct with um, it's a Mel Brooks idea and what she created. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, I vaguely remember the one that was on, like when Fox was rolling out their, their new lineup, when they were just on like what Saturday and Sunday nights when they first started, they didn't have mm-hmm. a full lineup or a full complement of TV shows for the week. One of my thought was get smart, or maybe even like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I don't remember for sure at this point. Okay. But all I do remember about the show was it was they got Don Adams back, and they got um, was it ninety nine? I forget her name. Yeah. But they got the two of them back, and then Andy Dick was playing their kid. Oh. <laughs> 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 and, and it's just one of those things where you know Andy Dick being Andy Dick, I always wondered 
how that was, you know, how, I mean, I don't know if he was Andy Dick at that point. I think he was just, you know, you know, I don't know if he was, and I'm saying he's like, I'm not saying he's like he was Andrew. I'm just saying he wasn't mm-hmm. over the top or, you know, into as much stuff as he was into at the time when he made that, that pilot or that show. So, yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, there was, there was definitely a, a, a phase, you know, Adam's family. Yeah. That was another, that was another, you know, reboot couple that they did. And, uh, you know, what do we got? We got dark shadows. Not like even not that long ago. I mean, it's st- like, they're still getting mined. And I think some of them, I, I, I think some of them make a lot of sense to try and give second life to, mm-hmm. but yeah. yeah, there's, um, there, there's, there, there's a window to hit though. You're right. I was going to say a weird one was, um, Ali G show. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which came out of, um, HBO in which they did Boat, Bruno and Ali G movie, right. which no one saw coming. It's like, he took a bit and made it into a two hour movie that blew up. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and when I was looking up the stuff going off of, of that, Tommy, I stumbled upon the entire like catalog of Saturday night live movies. Yes. Oh, yes. Like, right. Some we know some are great. Some are hits. <laughs> some are, are really funny. Some are did not land. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So like yes. in order, we got like blues brothers, yes. which is great fun. Wayne's world, which is great fun. Mm-hmm. Then Coneheads. <laughs> Yeah. It's Pat, if anyone right. remembers that right. bit. <laughs> yeah. Ladies Man with Tim Meadows. Yes. I love Ladies Man. Superstar, Molly Shannon's Mary Catherine mm-hmm. Gallagher. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Stuart Saves His Family, which was Al Franken's recurring mm-hmm. character from Saturday Night Live. Okay. Uh, Night at the Roxbury. Yep. Jeez. I saw that in the theater and I was, I was doing the, the head bob through the, I was with some <laughs> idiot friends of mine and we were just doing that through the whole movie. <laughs> The there's only, like, there's or only whatever. three other people to theater other than us, though. <laughs> and then most recently, and I think the last one is uh, MacGruber. Oh, yeah. Yeah. From about 10 years ago. Which I think is getting a show. Yeah. Now, I heard. Yeah. Is he really? Wow. Yeah. No, there's a lot. Of, I still want my Gilligan's Island movie, though. I still do. <laughs> I still do. Sure. Yeah. So, okay. So to start wrapping up then. I'm going to ask you guys, you guys can answer either one of these questions. I'm going to throw two of them out there, right? So what's a TV show that could use a movie? You can answer that one. Or what's a TV show that got a movie that, eh, we didn't really need that one. Or if you want to answer (laughs) both, go ahead with both. But (laughs) so I'll toss it. uh, Frank, I'll toss it to you first since you started. Oh, sure. Um, I, (laughs) you know, I had a, do you want just the one that I had or do you want to hear both that I had? Because one, sure, I, I no, don't really, I don't both. really, I think I kind of talked about the ones I don't think really needed or, you know, didn't really need a movie for mm-hmm. when I was talking earlier about Deadwood. Um, you know, I, 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 for ones that I think need a movie or deserve a movie is one is, um, Santa Clarita diet. Okay. Um, okay. The way that, um, I don't know if everyone's seen it or, or, or watched it or whatever. I have but, not, but you okay. can go ahead. Okay, well, I'm, I'm not spoiling anything. It just ends on a, it, it's one of the things where it ends on a, on a fairly big cliffhanger, and it, it it needs to be, you know, I I feel that it needs to be addressed and wrapped up, um, but because it, it's something something happens near the end, of the, you know, I think they wrote the, the last episode with it thinking that we're going to have another season, and they just didn't. Netflix canceled that from underneath them, right. so I, that's that's my you know I'd like to my my um my number one seed though would be Community. Okay. Um, okay. They've been teasing forever the idea that they were, uh, you know, it was six seasons in a movie that was a hashtag for a while. <laughs> yeah. um, the idea that we, that we, you know, they had that that what was it, uh, YouTube TV show? Is that what it was? Where they had the the, the last season <sighs> on wherever it was, but they bankrupted the, <laughs> they ran that place <laughs> in the ground and now it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> but anyway, that was the thing for a while. Was that with um. They were talking about it for for you know just trying to get everyone together. And when they had their recent table read for it again, that came up, as well as the fact that people seem to have discovered or rediscovered on Netflix since it's running there. I think that was the one that you know I would like to see Netflix say, yeah, we, we'll, we'll give Greenlight a movie for that. Okay, cool, very cool. All right, Tommy, you got one. Yeah, I'm gonna go with your option of we got it, but we didn't need it. <laughs> okay, Breaking Bad's El Camino. Okay. Ooh. Don't spoil it because I still haven't seen it. It doesn't. You don't. And that's my whole point. You don't have to see it. You can. Okay. You can not see it now, right. and you'll be fine with the ending that you got. Okay. There's nothing. I felt that needed to embellish 
what you already know, <laughs> especially since we got Better Call Saul. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It digs. It gives whatever we didn't get before fills that need with Better Call Saul with certain characters. Uh, origins. I right. feel more fulfilled with Better Call Saul than having the and mind you, I didn't even finish watching El Camino. I just had it explained <laughs> to me and I was fine with it. Wow. I I've like known the, you, Tommy, I've known you a long time. Mm-hmm. And I think I have an, an idea sometimes of your taste, but every once in a while you, you throw a curveball at me and I never, ever would have guessed that you would have said El Camino was, was, was one that's like, nah, we don't need a Breaking Bad movie. We I, didn't. Ne- I, I would have put money on, on, on that, you know? Yeah. But here's my, and here's my reasoning. Mm. You know how everyone made you see Breaking Bad by talking about it? Yeah. Have you ever gotten that with El Camino? No, I forget that it's out. Exactly. <laughs> I forget that it, I forget that it exists. I, I I agree with Tommy. I, I don't think we need I, I watch all of El Camino and, and I liked it, but it's not it's not necessary. Mm. It's not even like a hat on a hat situation. It's kinda like, okay, yeah, they did that. Yeah. <laughs> so mm. you know. Somebody but, wanted a summer home. Yeah. Clifton, you got one? Yeah, I'm going with the show that I would like to see a movie of. And this is reaching back a little bit, and there's no chance this would happen, but it's Pushing Daisies. Oh, yeah. Mm, Okay. Which was the show from uh, Brian Fuller and Barry Sonnenfeld, starred Lee Pace, Anna Mm -hmm. Friel, Chai McBride, and Kristen Chenoweth. Yes. About the pie maker who could raise the dead. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, it got interrupted, uh, never got its momentum after the writer's strike of Mm, whichever year that was. Right. Uh, 2009. Productions a lot. And it was just one of the casualties from that. Yeah. And uh, it ran two seasons, 22 episodes total, and and never quite got to to wrap things up like they should have. So I would love to see just something from that, even after all this time. I totally agree. I'm I'm on board for that. Because at one point, for a, again, for a while, it was Fuller was saying, "Now nah, we'll wrap everything up in a comic," and <laughs> we never got that. So, oh yeah, I'd forgotten about that too. There was there's Poor been guy. like there's <laughs> one. I mean, there's one. I think there's a there's an issue that you can find if you look for it on um on on like eBay or something like that. There is an issue that was produced, but it doesn't read like a um doesn't read like it's anything that's continued from the show. It reads like it's one of those adjacent stories. Mm-hmm. So. But yeah, I was, I've always wanted to see more um, Pushing Daisies. I love Pushing Daisies. I think it's one of those shows that should have should have gone on. I don't think Brian Fuller has a property he's worked on that that this isn't this isn't like a thing that the fan base wants, right? Like mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, Dead Like Me, Wonder Falls, Pushing Daisies, Hannibal, like all yeah. of them. I th- like I've I've heard rumblings from fan base of, of all of those that want movies for him. Yeah, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. he, he you know? starts a good series. Yeah. No, he's good. I gotta watch Pushing Daisies. I gotta find where, great, where it's available. That's a stream. great show. I gotta, I gotta watch. It. Great show. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna do one that came out that's and because like, it, as bizarre as Sex in the City two is, I kind of like that it exists. It's <laughs> <laughs> you know, um. So yeah, I mean, I was talking about Gilligan's Island the whole time, and I still love that one, but I don't want to make that to be my 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 one. So I'm going to say uh, Superman, the animated series, because I feel this show didn't like doesn't quite. It's got kind of like uh, like middle child syndrome, like people talk animated series about how great it is. They talk Batman Beyond because it's this beloved, like new, different thing and Justice League because it was the thing that kind of tied everything up and Superman gets kind of lost in mm-hmm. it. And Superman had an animated movie called Brainiac's Attacks, which isn't very good. No. Um, nobody <laughs> no. remembers it. It's not really uh. made like the only thing of notoriety. The only thing that connects it is the fact that they used Bruce Timm's designs and that Dana Delaney and Tim Daly are doing the voices. It was the first time Tim Daly came back for it. So that's really the only thing that makes it connected to Superman, the animated series. So I would like a proper actual Superman animated series with, you know, Deanie and Tim and those guys. And, you know, I mean, there's right. a lot in the series that they didn't, that they didn't do. So that's my vote. 
Nice. So, all right, guys, we want to hear from you. Give us your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to suggest the topic for us while you're there. You can find links and examples to everything we talk about on letmenowhowitis.com. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help the channel to grow. And finally, don't forget to like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash letmenowhowitis and follow us on Twitter at our show's initials, L-M-K-H-I-I. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.